Hello and welcome again to Science Live, coming to you from the Creation Museum Science Education Lab. And I'm Mr. Roger Patterson, joined again by Dr. George Purdom today. So did you do anything exciting over the weekend? Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but I got a lot of stuff done around my house, so there yeah. are some positives to this. <laughs> yep. We did get out a little bit, stayed away from people, but out at the park uh, disc golfing. So Fun. <laughs> Your favorite thing. Enjoying those things. Um, we are... Continuing to bring you some of these live science demonstrations and, and content to help encourage your family to understand more about how God created the world around us and uh, get involved in uh, being curious and inquisitive and uh, asking questions. So Dr. Purdom will be monitoring comments yep. on Ken's Facebook Getting page some today. People on here. So if you've got anything to, to ask, we'll try to get a few of those questions on the air and then mm -hmm. I'll try and touch base with the, the Facebook page afterward and answer those things as well. All right. Any interesting places yet? Uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how interesting it is, but yeah. I'm sure there. there are parts that are interesting. <laughs> I'm sure there, there are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we are uh, waiting for notifications to go out and all of those things for people to, to jump on and join us and we'll uh, get started our topic today is called under pressure so we're going to be talking about gases and the way god has created gases and things around us and the way they operate and, and function in the world so this is a bit out of your realm of expertise yeah i said this is like <laughs> physics so you're gonna to have to handle this more than me <laughs> yeah so today we're, we're kind of on that intersection of chemistry and physics is mm -hmm. this a chemistry lesson or a physics lesson because they, they cross over a lot in those ways and a bit of geography. So if we think about the planet Earth, and if this little globe were to represent the planet Earth, and we think about the atmosphere, the atmospheric layer would come out here somewhere. Anywhere you are on the Earth, because the atmosphere is a sphere as well, there's gas pushing down on top of you. Now, if you think about it, can you feel anything pushing down on your head or your shoulders right now? No, okay. and I'm glad. <laughs> what about if you were under the water in a swimming pool? Yeah, you okay. start to feel then that. Then you start to feel that a lot more because water is more dense right. than air, a concept we talked about before. So all of the air in the atmosphere that's above you is actually squishing you. It's pushing down on you. And that's what we refer to as air pressure right. versus water pressure inside of a swimming pool or something. And we typically don't feel it because our bodies adjust to those things. Right. But times we can feel it. Have you ever driven, I know we're in, we're in Kentucky, but have you ever <laughs> driven up a mountain? What happens to your ears? I have, and they start to pop okay. as a result of that. Because as we move higher in the atmosphere, if you were up here, there's less air above you than if you're down on the surface of the earth. So as you drive up a mountain, there's less air above you. So there's less pressure pushing down on you. and our ears have eustachian tubes connecting down to the back of our throat, and so their pressure is trying to balance out. And it's harder to breathe as you get higher, because I've been, uh, I was in Ecuador and went up mm -hmm. on a volcano that was very high up, and it was just amazing how you just felt like your <laughs> breath was taken away from you, like you couldn't breathe hardly. Yeah. I lived out in Wyoming before we came mm -hmm. here. One of our houses up on the mountain was at about 5,000 feet, so one mile above sea level. The pass up above was a little over 10,000 feet, mm -hmm. and then some of the mountain peaks are 12,000. Yeah. So you have less oxygen right. concentration as you move up higher in the atmosphere. We often say the air gets thinner. thinner. Mm -hmm. right? It's less dense. So that's the concept of air pressure. So all around you, air is pushing down on you. So if you were at sea level, we measure that unit in one atmosphere of pressure. If you're up on a mountain, there's less of an atmosphere of, of pressure above you. So we're going to talk about pressure today and how that, um, how that relates to things around us. So to demonstrate how strong this pressure can really be, I got the strongest woman I know. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but we'll today. give it a shot. So what I've got here is a little syringe. And this syringe, I'm going to pull it out, and the end is off of it. I'm going to bring it up to the 60 milliliter mark. And I'm going to screw this little tip on it so no air. So there's air inside of here that's equal to the air outside. I'm going to screw this little tip on here to seal it. We've got people from all over, Australia, Canada, uh, New York City. Okay, <laughs> so no air can get in or out of this chamber, so it's a sealed chamber. And I want you to try to just push down on the top of here just a little bit. How does that feel? Okay so far? Okay so far. Okay, but now get a little further. What's happening? I can't. It's hard. I mean, I can, but it's, <laughs> it's really hard. 
Okay. Uh, I can't do it anymore. All right. So she went from 60 milliliters of volume only down to 20. So she was only able to compress that gas. That's one of the properties of gases that we think about that's different than liquids and solids. Gases can be compressed, mm -hmm. so their molecules can be more compact, so they get denser. So right now, there, if there were one atmosphere inside of this, there would be um, more and more pressure. So I'm increasing the pressure, and me being the giant strong man, I can't. <laughs> Got it Almost 10, oh, 15 about, maybe. About 13 or 14 there. <laughs> um, there's a lot of force pushing back. We usually wouldn't think about air being mm -hmm. strong, but think about driving down the highway. If you stick your hand out the window, you right. feel all the force of the air pushing against your hand. So air is actually a pretty strong um, mm -hmm. force when we, when we harness it the right way. Okay. If we think about this little balloon right here, there's air inside of the balloon and I pumped it in using this little pump and pumped the air into this balloon and tied it off. And so right now the molecules of air inside the balloon are pushing out right. and the air molecules on the outside are pushing in. So right now it's at a balanced state. So the amount of pressure inside is pushing out with the, with the latex balloon and all those forces are balanced. So we think about the way God's created things in an orderly way, and we have this wonderful equation. I know you guys all love math. It's your favorite thing, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're going to do science, you've got to learn math. You do. Um, so if we think about the pressure, volume, and temperature relationship that we start out in one situation, we can change those conditions, and there's a mathematical relationship. It's predictable. It, de it demonstrates what we call the uniformity of nature. And that reflects God's character because he's created the world in a way that's uniform, that we can understand it. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't, science wouldn't even be possible. Right. We know if we did this experiment tomorrow, for example, it would turn mm -hmm. out the same because yeah. the, the, the laws that govern all this are the same. And that's because God created that. Yeah. And it's a reflection of his character. He right. doesn't change. He's the one who's designed. I all actually have things. a good question. All right. So somebody said for animals that live on the mountains, do their ears pop? <laughs> <laughs> if they are already at that altitude, their eustachian tubes would already be balanced. But the same thing would happen for them. If they moved up, up uh, the mountain or down the mountain and the pressure changes, that could happen. It can even happen when storm systems come through. Mm -hmm. If there's enough, like today we have a, a pressure a cold, system moving through, mm -hmm. a cold front moving through. And as the pressure changes, you can even notice I've those things. I've noticed that before. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so let's demonstrate some of these forces um, balancing out with this equation by using this contraption here. It's a vacuum chamber. Ooh, so I'm back excited. here in the back, I have a vacuum pump. It's a little loud, so I'm gonna give you a quick test. If you're wearing headphones, <laughs> you might need to turn the volume down for just a second. This pump has a little piston in it and it pumps air out of a system. So I've got this closed jar here and it's gonna draw all the air out of the system. So what's that gonna to do to the pressure inside the jar? If I'm taking air molecules out of it, then the pressure is gonna go down, okay? Mm -hmm. And the volume is gonna stay the same because this is a very rigid <laughs> container. Right. So before we go any further, let's grab our safety glasses, oh, oops, there we are. put those on. It's a very low risk. This is a, a special chamber that's designed to do this, but um, this chamber, we're going to stick this balloon up inside of here, and I've got a little tape up there to help stick it to the top, and we're going to pump the air outside of this um, chamber so that the pressure goes down. Now, if there's less pressure on the outside of the balloon, I would predict that the molecules inside the balloon are going to have more pressure than mm -hmm. the outside. Right now, they're balanced. Right. So if I take down this side of the scale, this side's going to go up. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's watch what happens as we pump this. You can see that balloon beginning to expand. Okay, so let's stop it right there for a second. <laughs> I'm like waiting for it to pop. Nervous. <laughs> okay. So you saw the balloon get larger. So if we think about this relationship, the new conditions that we've created, the pressure has gone down, the temperature's remaining the same, so that means the volume has to go up to compensate for that. In math, we call that an inverse relationship. 
So the pressure and volume are inversely related in this. If we keep going, I didn't expect it to pop, but <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see the, the volume just keeps increasing. Now, if I restore the original conditions, if I open this valve, this will let the air flow back into the chamber. So right now I can lift this up and it's vacuum sealed. It's sucked onto here and it's not going to be removed. I open this up and see it starting okay. as the air comes in. It's going to go back to that original equilibrium. And we're back to the original size that we've had. So we've returned to those original conditions. Okay. Any questions coming in so far? Um, somebody, well, this is kind of an interesting observation. It says when we grocery shop at lower altitude and buy bags of chips, they are swollen and almost to the busting stage when I get home. Absolutely. Um, when we would go up on the mountain for a picnic or up uh -huh. camping or things, you'd have a bag of chips in the back seat of the car or whatever, and you'd right. get partway up the mountain and boop. You'd hear this pop in the back and you're like, oh, there went the Doritos. Or if you've flown on an airplane and mm -hmm. you have something like in a tube and you get off the airplane and it and you go to open it and stuff just squirts it's out squirt all of a sudden. The same idea. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can do the same thing but with something a little stronger. Here's a plastic bottle. Ah, I'll get the cat back on there. So I've taken a lot of the air out of here. There's still a little bit of air inside there. We're gonna try the same thing and see what happens with this plastic bottle. It was easy enough to pull this little stretchy balloon, but can it inflate a bottle? Is there enough force there? Let's find out. And That's as cool. much force as it <laughs> took for me to crush that bottle, the air inside there was able to fill it out. You wouldn't think air's that strong, but it really is. It has lots of force in it. Same thing's gonna happen if I return it back to the initial conditions. And it goes back to its to the state it was before. So we can see this law holds true. Okay? This, this is called the combined gas law. It's a way that we mathematically describe the world around us and the way God's mm -hmm. created things. So we can demonstrate that that holds true. This is always a fun one. Yeah, somebody's already said, can you put a marshmallow in there? We're getting there. There we go. <laughs> okay, so here we have a marshmallow. If you think about what a marshmallow is, it's basically a little sack of gelatin and sugar, sugar. <laughs> little mm -hmm. air pockets. It's fluffy and squishy because there's air inside of, trapped inside of little pockets. Uh, if we could look at that closely. Okay, so we're gonna set this yeah. marshmallow in here. Oops, I better get that label to the back so you guys can see. And let's see what happens to our marshmallow. You can see it expanding. Right now it's probably about twice of the size. And now it's starting to shrink. So why did it start to shrink? Hmm. So imagine that marshmallow was like a piece of bubble wrap. Basically what we've done is we've popped a lot of those bubbles. As we've drawn all the air out of there, it's broken some of those little bubbles. Mm -hmm. So now the bubbles can't hold air yeah. anymore and it, it shrinks shrink. back down. Mm -hmm. And so now we're gonna see the true size of a marshmallow without <laughs> any air pockets in it. <laughs> and it shrivels right up. Oh my gosh. Too tiny. So that compared to the first condition, the original condition, with all the air gone out of it, cool. <laughs> and it's like hard. Kind it's of. much smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's hard. So it's it won't hard. be as squishy as this mm -hmm. one because with all the air pockets in there. Okay. So we take advantage of this in processes that we call pneumatic. So pneuma is the uh, word we use to describe air movement. So if you've, if you've ever uh, used a pneumatic tool like an mm -hmm. air hammer or a drill or something that runs off of an air compressor, we're taking advantage of the flow of air and all the pressure that we can create. Or if you those. have pneumonia, mm -hmm. that refers to your lungs, right? It's a, yep. it's a problem with your lungs. So we'll, we'll insert some biology here. Yes. <laughs> oh, what about yeah. a peep? What's going to happen to a peep <laughs> if we do this? This one's just for fun. So a peep is basically a sugar-coated piece of marshmallow. <laughs> a sugar-coated piece of sugar. <laughs> sugar-coated fat sugar. <laughs> and there's the 
the peep. You can see it expanding. The skin is starting to crack. And that's about maximum. <laughs> and if we let it down again. We'll see the same thing. It shrinks down a little bit mm -hmm. as it goes back to its original size. So fun things we can do with the vacuum chamber. Um, unless your dad is a HVAC tech or <laughs> works on refrigerators, you probably don't have one of these right, around the house, right. but fun things to do. But here's something you could do around the house. Um, if you have a can, I just unplugged my microphone. We're going to set up a little experiment here that you could actually do at home. Okay. I'll be back in just a second. I hope you can see my arms still. <laughs> Somebody said you just made my kids day. All right. We're happy to do that for you. <laughs> That's the fun stuff. Yep. All right. So what we've got here is we've set up a regular soda can. Okay. This is sparkling water, my seltzer water. I drink with my kombucha every day. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of water into here. And Dr. Purdom is going to go ahead and ignite this flame. And we're going to heat up the air that's inside of here. So if you remember this equation, part of our equation is related to temperature. So the volume of the can is determined by the shape of it and the amount of air in it. And the temperature, if we adjust the temperature, what's gonna happen to the amount of pressure and the volume of the can? So that's what we're gonna try and explore with this experiment. Uh, somebody said they saw Claude. Oh, Claude's hiding back off the back of me. I really, <laughs> I didn't mean to get him in the show today, but there he is. He is there. <laughs> he won't be there every day. Okay, so we're heating up the air inside of here, and you guys probably can't see it, but we can see a little steam starting to come out of the top vent. We're gonna heat up the air inside of the can and as air is heated, the pressure is going to increase. And so relative to the outside pressure, we're gonna think about the forces of the gases. Right now, there's a hole in the top that allows the pressure to be balancing. And as the gases escape, you can see, see a little wisp yeah, of really steam see. coming out of there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the can and I'm gonna invert it quickly into this ice bath. And that's going to cool it rapidly. And we're going to see what happens to the can. If there, there was enough force to stretch a balloon with air pressure, there was enough force to stretch the water bottle, to stretch the marshmallow, can it crush an aluminum can? Is there enough pressure in air in the, the temperature differentials for us to be able to do that? So you could do this at home. Um, you can do this right on the stove top as long as the bottom of the can isn't painted, or you could use a propane torch or some other type of heating element to heat this up with your parents help of course yeah. get your ice bath ready it doesn't have to be this big and you can do this with all kinds of different cans you could try it uh, with soda cans with paint cans oh, yeah. whatever you wanted to do my dream someday is to do this experiment using a 55 gallon steel drum with oh, a, my goodness. <laughs> a kiddie pool filled with ice water we'll heat it up on a barbecue grill we'll seal it up and we'll throw that drum into the kiddie pool filled with ice water and watch it collapse That'd someday. Be awesome. That's my That'd dream. Be awesome. Well, let's do it in small scale here today. So I'm gonna grab this with my heat resistant tongs. Woo. <laughs> it's crushing. Wow, that's pretty neat. And it sucked some of the water back up in there. There was so much pressure. So when I lift this out of here, turn the flame off there. When I lift this out of here, see water was drawn up into the can. So there was enough pressure outside of the can to push in as the pressure inside the can went down. So we can see air is much stronger than we would normally think it is. Okay. Uh, amazing things that we can do. Um, we think about weather systems, we think about mm -hmm. pneumatic tools, we think about all types of different things that involve using air to perform different functions for us, ways that God's given Even us to manipulate. Lungs. The sure. fact that we can breathe mm -hmm. has to do with the fact that when you breathe 
in, what are you doing? You're expanding the volume. Mm -hmm. And so Your what diaphragm happens? diaphragm lowers so and the, opens the volume. Right. So then air comes in mm -hmm. because to equalize, right? And yep. then when you breathe out, the lungs, you start to collapse basically everything here. So the volume decreases and so the air comes yep. out. Mm -hmm. so, so simple reference to that pressure and volume change, right. the temperature being mm -hmm. roughly the same in that right. case. So we see that inverse relationship. So those are some fun things we can do to demonstrate air pressure and how those things work. Any last questions we can answer? Somebody just said, you should keep doing this after the quarantine. It's so <laughs> fun. And we, we hope to. We yeah. really have plans to do that. We'd love so. to um, turn this into a program where we can do a, a bit more and produce mm -hmm. these things a little better. But we love interacting with you guys. Love that we can bring these things to you. And we just hope that it will help you appreciate God more. And um, want to remind you again, we've got programs coming up today. You want right. to share about so those? So at noon, we have Terry Mortensen with The Origin of Species with Darwin Wright. So you'll want to be sure to check that one out because that's a really neat talk. At 2 o'clock, we have Answers News. And it's actually a special Answers News yeah. today uh, with our astronomer, Danny Faulkner. So if you love astronomy, um, we're going to be really focusing on that today. And then at 3 o'clock, um, it'll be Ken with The Pigs. <laughs> okay, at the ARC, and um, at 7 o'clock tonight, really hope that you'll tune in. Um, Ken is going to be doing a special response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, and just really, it, it's a very encouraging devotional that he's going to be sharing with everyone at 7 p.m., so tune in to Ken's page and to watch mm -hmm. that. So All right. that's it. And then remind you guys, if you're looking for great resources, we've got the Matthew 6 code to, to buy resources off of the Internet. Um, we will intend to be back with you tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Faulkner will also be with us right. again tomorrow, we hope. And I just hope that you guys will en enjoy all of these things we're doing and that it encourage you, encourages you to be more inquisitive about the world God has made and that you'll get out and explore God's creation.